Cam Thomas being banished to the end of the bench was something that always confused me. Sure, he used to provide basically nothing but scoring, but someone with his scoring talent at age 20 to 21 should have always had a consistent role in this league. Thankfully, someone in the Brooklyn Nets organization made a call, and this season Cam Thomas has been fully unlocked. It's been a bad season in Brooklyn, especially considering Houston has their pick, but they do at least have an exciting and dynamic young star. Today I'm going to be reviewing Cam's career so far, just how stupid his playtime inconsistency was, his breakout season, and why he's one of my favorite players to watch. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It would help me out a ton. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. I want to start off by shaming any and everyone involved in the decision to continue and maybe even heighten the inconsistency in Cam's minutes following a bad game after three games where he averaged 45-5-4 on 56-56-90. This is far from the start of the incompetency surrounding Cam, but is definitely the most egregious example. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Going back to his rookie season, it was painfully obvious that Cam Thomas was a bucket. There is an excuse for when the Nets had all of KD, Kyrie, and Harden, but even then each of them missed time at different points. In his rookie season in 17 games when playing 25 plus minutes, Cam Thomas averaged 18, 4, and 2 on 47, 32, 83 for a true shooting percentage of 56.1. Just about half a percentage point below league average for a rookie who's a scorer who gets inconsistent playtime. I understand there's a stigma against straight scorers in today's basketball discourse, but at the same time, in such an offensive-centric league, I was always confused about Cam's inconsistent opportunity. While the numbers I am about to share are what got him his opportunity he has now, Cam not being given more opportunity at the time is still unacceptable. He only had 15 games where he was given 25 plus minutes in his sophomore season, but in these games he made sure he would be getting opportunity, whether that was in Brooklyn or elsewhere. At 21 years old in 15 games playing 25 plus minutes, Cam Thomas averaged 26-3-3 on 49-47-90 for a true shooting percentage of 63.8%. Not the greatest sample size, but not the smallest either. If you'd like a larger sample size, simply combine his first and second year stats I just laid out. I don't care how good exactly you think Cam Thomas is, but suggesting he shouldn't have a spot in an NBA top six, let alone in the rotation whatsoever, is, and always was, flat out dumb. People will point to Cam's bad games as a rebuttal, but in a number of them, he isn't able to get any sort of rhythm because he's putting up like five shots. And this brings us here, to the current day where Cam Thomas is finally getting a real chance. He's averaging 22 on not the greatest efficiency, but he has really turned it up lately after a bit of a mid-season slump after a start similar to what he's doing now before his injury. Fresh off a 38-point performance, as of March 28th in 9 games this month, Cam Thomas is averaging 26-5-4 on 48-35-89 for a true shooting percentage of 58.9%. This stretch includes games against the Knicks, Pelicans, Magic, and Cavs defenses. As I said earlier, he had a start to the season similar to this and has bounced back in a huge way after a less than satisfactory February. Enough with the numbers and how we got here and why it's so stupid that it took us so long to get here. Let's talk about why in my eyes, Cam Thomas is one of the most entertaining scorers the league has to offer. He's a bucket, simple and plain. Shoot first and shoot always, and I absolutely love it. A bad shot doesn't exist for him, and with his tough shot making, can you really blame him? Whether it's his patented pull-up midi or step back three, his space creation and straight up fearlessness of anyone who stands in front of him is a special trait. He's only 6'3", but with his elevation and quick release, he is nearly impossible to contest if you're out of position or even in it. Along with his tough shot making, Cam also embraces contact and bumps his defender often, making him an extremely tough cover. Also, how methodical he is in the pick and roll is reminiscent of an NBA veteran. He takes his time, doesn't rush, and gets to his spots. Whether it was in high school at Oak Hill, at LSU, or now in Brooklyn, Cam Thomas has gotten buckets at every level and that isn't changing in the NBA. While he is absolutely a scorer primarily, Cam has also inevitably shown more playmaking flashes in an increased role. While I don't know if he'll ever become an elite playmaker, as he continues to see coverages more focused on him, he will inevitably improve. To wrap this up, while I know things look grim in Brooklyn, you at least have some pieces, including a 22-year-old who I believe is more than capable of becoming a 25-30-a-night guy. 
Cam is one of my favorite players to watch, and even though the Nets are kind of in the background now, it's important to me to highlight guys who are just a joy to watch. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell. Comment down below, you know, what are your thoughts on Cam Thomas' season? I know he slumped a little bit in the middle of the season after he came back from that injury, and I'm not blaming the entirety of that on the injury, you know, because, you know, I mean, maybe you could blame his December on that, but you can't blame his February on that. But yeah, I mean, he's still only 22 years old. That's the other part of this as well. I think in the right scenario, he could easily become a 25 to 30 a night guy in this league. I don't see a doubt. It, you know, I mean, there's not a doubt in my mind at all. He's already improved his three-point shooting, which I really should have talked about more. Now that I think of that, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull up the numbers because I forgot to put this in the script. His three-point shooting, well, I mean, you know, you know, he, he's shooting a lot more. He's shooting a lot more. He did have a higher percentage last year. But he is shooting a lot more threes inevitably because he is playing a lot more. But, you know, if he can get that three-point percentage up and just get, like, if he can get more efficient, like, if he can get to average efficiency, if he were to have average efficiency right now, he'd be a 25-a-night guy. So, you know, I really think the sky's the limit for Cam. You know, he's not the tallest, but he can get that shot off anywhere. And, you know, for the Nets, you know, it's looking grim. You know, you decline that Bridges offer, which is just, man, I mean, I love Mikael Bridges. You know, I, I'm a Villanova fan, or I, I was. I mean, I still kind of am. But, you know, I grew up watching Villanova, so, like, I knew Mikael... The, the funniest thing to me is when I tweet something about Mikael Bridges and, like, Suns fans and start trying to talk to me. Like, I didn't know who he was four years. I, but whatever. Whatever. Uh, you know, I, I'm just rambling at this point. Cam Thomas, pure bucket. Crazy to watch. Nets fans, at least you have him because there's a lot of really bad teams who don't have a guy like that. I, I mean, I, Jordan Poole now is hooping, but the Wizards didn't have that at all. I mean, Kuhl's decent, but, you know, he, he's, he's not like, like, Poole is like a Cam Thomas where it's like, bro, you watch him and it's like, oh, shit. Like, oh, like, you know, you know, and I might make a pool video actually because he's been turning up as of late and he has been the butt of a lot, a lot of stuff. But as I said, I'm rambling. I mean, he's been, he's been turn, turning up relatively to what he was doing. I'll say that much. He's been inconsistent. He's had some really good games. But I'm going to wrap this up before I start talking about any and every prayer hooper in existence. But I'll catch you on the next one. If you're still here right now, comment. I always say the same things, but comment Wolf. I got the, I got the gold the, the gold Minecraft Wolf from the little minifigures. You know, it's a classic. Uh, allegedly, you know, go to CVS and, uh, you know, acquire them uh, in, when I was in middle school. But yeah. Peace.